Hello Bean and welcome to a new video. So about one and a half year ago I got this big opportunity to work on a comic together with a big publisher. I had to read the book completely, I had to rewrite this into a comic book script, I had to do all of the character designs and doing the text, doing the layout, doing the illustrations, doing the cover everything. I have done a lot of preparation work. I will show you some of it now to just show you what I have done before actually starting to illustrate this comic. For example, I did some research about speech bubbles, what they are for, how to do them right, and then I also did some studies about lighting in comics and yeah then I actually went straight into the character designs and you can see some of them here. There are six main characters in this comic and one of them is actually a hare so I had to do some yeah sketches of hares and bunnies as well. I did some yeah clothing studies and here are the actual character designs of the six main characters. And yeah, I was just trying to catch like the vibe of them, catch them in some poses and in some actions and just get their outfits and yeah, their looks right. And I know that I have to do a lot more character design for them, but I have these initial ideas of them in mind. I work them out a little and I know how I want them to look very roughly. So I think I can still, yeah, start working on the comic with this and the characters will just elaborate during this process, I think. My problem now is that I have done all of this character work and all of this preparation work, but I have actually not started to draw the actual comic yet, so I have not started illustrating. I have over 100 pages of storyboards already, so I can start drawing the comic because I have ideas for all the pages and for all the panels, but yeah, I, I don't know, I just didn't get into the process of doing so. And I will just show you real quick that I have done here some sketches for the storyboard of the first page. And then the first chapter, the book starts with the main character drowning in a spring with a lot of fish around him. So I want to have this yeah, as the opening scene, of course. And I already worked, as you can see here, a lot on this first chapter. So I have a lot of ideas for the opening page. I already rendered it, did some grayscale, did some coloring, um, tried out a style, but this style will not be the style that I will use in the whole comic because it is just too rendered and yeah, I don't have time for this in a 200 plus pages comic. But yeah, I have the storyboard, as I said, I have him underwater with the fish, but as you can see here, he does not look like he is actually drowning. I think there has to be more panic in this images because when you're drowning, you panic, <laughs> I think, because you think that you die. And all of this is just too calm and too chill. But I have all these ideas already and I just have to work them out now. So now I really want to start this first page, start this comic, do the opening page and as I said I hope that this video will motivate me to do that, to finish it because I want to show it to you and maybe I will also do like the second and the third page so that we not only have this two panels that I'm planning on for the opening page but maybe some more of the comic. Yeah, but let's get this party started. <laughs> let's finally start this comic. And I think that starting off is always the hardest part, the most complicated part. And I just hope that after starting, the rest will come more easy. So yeah, let's start this project together. <laughs> and I will show you my process of doing this comic page or comic pages, even though I don't have a process yet, because this is the first page that I will draw. I hope this is interesting for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's go. Let's start with page number one. To get started with this page, I simply copied the sketch I had already made onto the canvas. To create the panels, the Monero comic brush pack is really helpful because it allows you to easily create evenly spaced panels. To do this, I first have to turn on the drawing guide. And don't be surprised if I turn it off again. It's still on, but you can't see the lines anymore. And then set the layer to drawing assist as well. Now you can only draw straight lines and everything is super clean and simple, as you can see here. The brushes need a few presets so that the lines have the right thickness, but once you've set them up, they are great to work with. I like the sketch I have done so far, but then I decided to turn the character around again. As the perspective is no longer quite right, I had to take a new reference picture. I actually do this quite often, especially with more difficult perspectives and positions. 
Now I could start making a new sketch. I thought the idea of the foreshortening with the foot in focus was pretty cool, as well as having the school of fish spiral around the character. I haven't focused so much on the facial expression and details yet, as I wanted to set the composition and colors first. Speaking of colors, I decided to go for the contrast between orange and blue. Orange for the fish with some shimmer to them and blue for the underwater surrounding. And I think this creates an amazing atmosphere. Now I could work out the sketch and clean up the outlines. This always takes me the longest because I have to pay more attention to anatomy and the right perspective in this step, so I always have to move a few things around. I spontaneously decided to include strokes as the first shading in the outlines, and I think it makes the character look less empty and gives the effect of drawing with a real pencil to it. I drew the fish completely without references, I think that's why they look so derpy, I mean, look at them. I think they don't even know what is going on here or where they are. <laughs> and I was honestly tempted to just copy and paste the fish, but ended up drawing them all individually. The school of fish actually didn't take as long as I thought, but whenever I draw things that are repetitive in their shapes, I get really impatient and my hand doesn't want to do the same movements anymore. So here I cheated a bit and copied. In the lower panel I was a bit more relaxed when drawing, but I think that was also because it was a close-up. I generally prefer to draw with thicker lines, which I was able to use here, so it felt more natural. And now we're actually finished with the outlines for page 1. I am very happy with it, but now comes the more complicated part for me, the coloring. Since the color combination of orange and blue was already clear to me from the beginning and I already had that in my color sketch, the basic colors came pretty quickly. And to color the large areas such as the school of fish or the body, I selected and filled the entire shape with a lasso tool. I can highly recommend that by the way. I shaded the fish layer by layer, first a light yellow layer to make them glow and then increasingly darker orange to better illustrate the mass of fish. I shaded the individual fish using the same steps. And to make them stand out better from the background, I created a new layer for colored outlines and then added an extra outline to the eyes and fins for example. However, the school was not dark enough in the lower corner of the upper panel yet to stand out from the fish in the foreground, so I had to go over that again. To add even more depth, I gave individual fish in the school more detailed outlines. Then I started shading the character and I knew that this would be a real challenge for me. I have absolutely no idea how shadows work underwater and did the whole thing without a reference, so like with the fish, I gradually got darker and darker here as well. Another difficulty was somehow figuring out how the golden glow of the fish would look on the skin and how can I say it? I still haven't really figured it out yet. At first I wanted to add the glow to the areas of the body, for example the face or the chest and also give the fish a real glow, but I thought that was just too much. So I focused more on the rim light and only added orange light to the sides of the character. But I think that helps to make the already dark character stand out from the dark background more, so it's a good thing, right? I think you can see quite clearly here that I experimented a lot with the light, but in the end decided to leave it out in many places. And finally came the fun part, painting the air bubbles. That was really fun. I kept them quite simple in a lighter shade of blue and added a few highlights here and there. And I think they really make a big difference in the overall picture and fill in the empty spaces very well. I added a little bit more value to some of the fish by using a darker shade of orange in the end and because this is a comic, speech bubbles are a must. These are also from the Monero brush pack that I mentioned in the beginning, which you can find in the description and I have also added a link to one of my favorite brush packs that I used there. And here you can see the end result with text, even though most people probably can't read it because it is in German. But please tell me, what do you think of this first page? To be honest, I am not completely happy with the light, but at least I have finally started the comic and that's what it was all about, right? I think that I will come back later to this page, but it is just so important to start. So goal achieved, even though it is only one page, but I hope many more will follow soon. Feel free to tell me what you think of this page as an opener and whether you would read the comic or not. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video and the little painting process and if you also want to start a comic, do it. Just start. Immediately. <laughs> Just kidding. 
been great to have you here. I hope that you're doing well as always. Stay creative and I hope that I will see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye!